My first approach to repair this damage, which is very typical for the 105, was to replace the dodgy overlay panel by a self-made butt welded repair panel. However, it just didn't feel quite right. It may be something that I've heard rather than seen, you know. Sometimes it's more a feeling than a real perception. In any case, at some point I decided that I need to remove this panel on a greater scale and that I want to take a closer look at this door sill. I'm sure you ask yourselves why I'm cutting in parts the repair panel instead of replacing it completely. There's a number of reasons for that. First, the original floor pan is made of two pieces, one for the driver and one for the passenger side. The repair panels come as four, which means one has to do a fair bit of butt welding anyway to get front and rear part together. Second, the gearbox and drive shaft are connected to the inner part of the floor pans, so it's necessary to support them some way while the panel is out. And third, the most important reason, I don't like replacing stuff if I can just as well save it. In my car, the front edge of the floor pan section is straight. The front end of the repair panel, however, has a curved edge. I therefore had to beat the fold straight first and then beat it in again in a different place. And while I'm doing this, in my last video I said that the spare part paint needs to go off before the parts go in. Well, sorry guys, I was a bit premature with that. So the facts are, some parts come with grey paint, it's not durable and it needs to go off. Some parts come with rather flat black paint and it seems to be the same paint but black instead of grey. Some parts, however, come with rather glossy black paint. That still is not KTL but it's good two component paint which is really robust. So this time I kept it on the parts. Those of you who watched my last films will already recognize what I'm doing here. I'm applying the butt welding technique of Master Fitzy from Newfoundland. Fitzy says, tack weld the parts onto each other, cut them together section by section under an angle of 45 degrees and then create a butt joint section by section. It's such a great help, I put the link in the video description. Now, the checking point is connected to the floor pan and the sill with altogether six brackets and I wanted to get two welding spots at each of them. So you can watch me making 12 welds under the car with bad light and no space. God, I'm happy to have this thing in.
now that the car could be lifted to a level of human dignity, I was able to continue the work on the door sill, which last time I brought to the point where the middle sill was welded in, but not the outer sill. The fit of this repair panel, it isn't remotely anywhere close to the concept of taking it as it is and welding it in. But am I complaining? No, I actually don't. Every 105 Julia in some way is an individual and the length of the cabin can vary by 10 millimeters. That's at least what people say in forums. How can you expect a spare part to fit with a reverence that vague? It's great that these parts are available at all, and while I could roughly fit the shape at some points by beating them in place, I had to accept that I would have to make a small repair panel at this spot. You know, it's a rather easy thing to do to stretch sheet metal with the hammer and the dolly. Shrinking it, however, is possible only within very narrow bounds. When I released my first video of the door restorations, where I did do some minor shrinking with the hammer, a friend contacted me and he offered me to borrow his shrinker for some weeks. This is a magnificent machine and I will show how it works in much more detail when I will do the second rear door. Sometime the mountain needs to come to the prophet and so I fitted the sill to the door. I wasn't quite happy with the door gap and so I moved it all up a bit for the price of having to trim the upper edge of the repair panel. With the C pillar fitted, I moved on to the A pillar, which all in all fitted pretty well from the start. 
well knowing that a good fit of the A-pillar and the C-pillar separately do not mean that it all will come together nicely. But we shall see. One of the things I left undone in the first part is the corner of the inner fender down at the C-pillar. It's a very typical rust spot. Many 105 have holes here. A prefab repair panel is not available. So here's what I did. I first aligned the comma dolly to get an idea of the required curvatures. Next I transferred the shape that I marked on the dolly to some piece of sheet metal. Now the panel is clamped into the vise in a way that the comma aligns with the line in the panel. This allows to copy the shape of the comma to the panel as long as only stretching is involved. If parts of the panel need shrinking, you guess it, that's where my new favorite toy comes in. Three weeks ago I accidentally cut into this inner wheel arch a bit too deeply and tried to weld the slit but the metal was already too corroded to accept any welding so I had to make a small repair panel. A wheel arch's geometry looks simple but mostly it isn't as the metal is curved in two directions and that again means shrinking.
Now back to the B pillar. Early on you saw me repairing a gap not very much bigger than this one here by creating a small repair panel. Now fitting a local area is one thing, but fitting different places at a huge panel to the final millimeter accuracy is a different story. And so I decided to this time simply close the gap by welding. Welding a gap like this is not feel-good welding. It's a pragmatic approach to get a problem solved with acceptable effort. Like already explained in other films, doing that sort of workday welding, I concentrate on adding material only to spots where there is enough material built up already. Once I'm getting closer to the edge of the other panel, I create some melt on the strong side and smear it over to the thin one. With that problem solved, I did a final check of the regularity of the gap, which was okay, and went welding it all together. You remember when I lifted up the whole sill panel by a couple of millimeters to get a nicer gap and so I had to trim the upper edge accordingly. And that meant that at the C pillar radius the upstand for the door sill became a bit too shallow. There's not much to say about the spot welding at the bottom side except maybe that I didn't find any proper angle to film this for you. Rust protection down here will be a subject of another film, but that's not today. Let's talk about these seams. The sheet metal used at this area has a thickness of 0.8 mm and it's quite clear that making an invisible butt weld required the panels to be absolutely flush. And that of course means that over a length of say 2 meters from A to C pillar one has to fulfill accuracy requirements of only a few tenths of a millimeter. Sounds kind of difficult to me. It's therefore a good idea to not grind down the seams to level zero but accept some welding bead. And that raises the question of covering it. Body filler would be an option and I can't see any reason to not use it except that there's one. I have a weak spot for old-fashioned craftsman's techniques and I haven't practiced tin coating for a while. In the past this material consisted of a fair amount of lead, so actually this is called leading for a good reason. But we all know that lead has some serious consequences for health if brought inside the body. 
Today you can get material consisting of 100% tin. Now, I really don't want to blame the material, but last time I did this was in the late 90s when it was common practice to use a lead tin alloy. And I'm quite sure it worked much better back then. Anyway, so I need to do some more research on available alloys and so propane torch is much better suited than the either too hot or too sooty map gas flame that I'm using here. I ended up with a satisfactory result.